So uh, for starting seeds indoors, uh, some of the reasons why you might want to start seeds indoors is um, to get a head start on, on planting stuff outdoors. Um, in, our, in our climate, we have uh, only so many growing days and certain plants need um, a long growing season. Um, sometimes you just want to have more yield so you can have the plants start producing as soon as that uh, frost-free date is comes around, which around here is um, sometime around May 15th. <clears throat> so uh, there's a lot of ways to, to start seeds in, indoors, a lot of different um, methods. I'm going to show you a bunch of different types. Um, one of the things that seeds need to start indoors is a uh, seed starting medium. And um, it's, it should be a, a soilless medium, could be a mixture of, of peat moss, um, <clears throat> uh, perlite and uh, compost, vermiculite. Um, we have uh, we have these handouts. They actually have a, a basically a, a recipe for it. Um, I've also had good experience with coconut core, which is a good alternative to peat moss. Uh, it's a a byproduct of the um, coconut harvesting or coconut industry, and uh, <coughs> it's sustainable as opposed to peat moss, which, which isn't. It actually destroys wetlands. So it's a good alternative. Um, so there's uh, <coughs> I have a couple, couple different methods of, of holding the, the um, soil start or the uh, seed starting medium. Uh, one of them is, is using old paper towel tubes and toilet paper tubes. Um, you, can, you can cut them down so if you don't need them this long. And now if you have something that grows really deep roots, these are good. You just leave them this size and when you plant them, the, the group, uh, roots are going to go straight down and these things will break down in the soil and you can just plant them as is. The sweet roots can come out the bottom. Um, but one of the things you should know is uh, since there's no bottom to this, you can't really move this except as in the, in the container or until the roots grab hold of, of that soil. So, um, a little bit about uh, the, the seed started medium. When you, uh, when you get ready to plant some seeds, um, you should uh, pre-moisten the soil. So, uh, but it's good to do it 24 hours ahead of time, kind of gives it time to soak in. Um, if not, you know, just you want to get it, get it moist but not soaking wet. Um, so I'll uh, actually practice with this right here. I'm just going to use a little bit. And I'll show you the consistency. This is an awesome flask right here. I'm going to get one from my house. Yeah, that's too much. So actually, this, uh, this peat moss, this is kind of gives you a good um, good demonstration of, of why it would be good to soak it overnight. If anybody can see that, some of the peat moss just kind of floats on top. It doesn't really, so it takes time for the water to soak into the, to the peat moss. Thanks, Susan. Yeah, it's definitely scared of the water. So it, it floats on top of it. And um, <coughs> so it, uh, yeah, you definitely, it, it'd definitely be good to start with a pre-moistened mix. So this just makes it a little bit more difficult for me. Um, I think I'll just work this in here real good. <coughs> I'm using some seeds from, uh, from last year that I'm going to just practice on here. All right, so that's a little bit too wet. But you pretty much, <laughs> I do. I actually um, I make a lot of bread, so this is kind of uh, I do this a lot. Usually it's edible though. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is a little bit wet because I can squeeze it and, and the water comes dripping back out. But you'd want it to kind of clump together loosely and then it would break apart. So it's got a, a, a nice uh, structure to it. Um, when it sticks together in a big clump, I mean this isn't too bad. Once it finally 
soaks to its soaks up all the water. It might be a little bit better. Um, you don't want it to just clump together in a big mess because the roots are going to have a hard time growing through that, especially for a uh, brand new seedling. Um, and you don't want it too dry that it doesn't form any kind of, it doesn't stick together at all. Like this stuff. It's just completely dry. There's nothing there for the, the roots to suck up the water. So <clears throat> pretty much just fill up your, your pot. You don't want to fill it up. Um, you don't want to pack the soil in there. You just want to fill it up to the top. And you want to fill it up to the top because uh, if you fill it up too low, it can, it, um, sometimes the pots and stuff, they can grow mold on them and um, that'll end up killing off your, your seedlings. And then for, uh, for planting the seeds, um, sometimes I actually like to, to pre-soak my seeds for a little bit just to kind of give them a, a chance to soak up some water before they get into the, the soil. Um, but depending on the seed, uh, really you look at the back of the pack and it tells you exactly how to plant it. But um, typically without, without reading the package, uh, if you plant it one seed um, thickness deep, so for real small seeds, all you really need to do is basically lay it on top and maybe just brush some soil over it. For a bean, I'll, I'll push this down about a quarter to a half an inch. That's pretty loose in there. <coughs> so I've got that down about that far. Now that my hands are sufficiently dirty, um, I want to talk about the, the seeds themselves. Um, there's, uh, I, I mentioned that I was using last year's seeds. Um, we've got here, uh, Dr. Corbin did a, a germination test. And uh, so if you're using, um, if you're using brand new seeds, they usually have a, a germination rate on them and it's, typically 60 to 90 percent depending on the, the seeds themselves. Uh, pretty much you could just put them in the soil and they'll start growing. Um, but you do want to plant, uh, I only planted one seed in this in this pot right here just because it was a demo, but you, you'd want to um, plant anywhere from two to four seeds depending on what you're what you're growing and then you just kind of thin them off because if you if you have a 60 percent germination rate and you planted one seed you have 30% chance that 33% chance that it's not gonna um, it's not gonna grow. So you just wasted that pot right there. So if you put two in there, um, now your your chances are much higher that you're actually gonna have a plant growing out of the out of the pot. If you're using um, uh, last year's seeds, the the seed viability goes down over time. So some some seeds the that viability goes down real quick um, I've had experience with onion seeds where within a year they didn't they didn't last and it might have been just my particular seeds um, it, it could be other it could just be onion seeds in general I'd have to actually you know you can look these things up online but a quick way um, to test is is you take 10 seeds and you just plant them on paper towel and keep them covered and uh, um, if you have six seeds that grow out of that, those 10 seeds, then you've got a 60% germination rate, give or take. Um, you might have had six out of 10 really good seeds. Um, so that can, that can tell you how well your seeds are, are gonna actually germinate. Uh, I've, I've seen for for seeds that, I mean, some seeds could last forever, but some um, kind of a rule of thumb is, is five years is how long they'll last, but give it a try. Try, uh, try germinating a bunch of your seeds and, and see if they, if they take. And you could actually use these and, and plant them in the soil. So uh, once you get the seeds planted in the containers, um, they, need, they need warmth to germinate. Um, they'll need light, especially once they um, start to break through the soil, and uh, and moisture. And you want to you want to keep them humid. So um, 
you've seen a lot of seed start and trays at the at the store. They've got the humidity um, covers. So until you're uh, when the seeds are, are germinating, until they actually break through and they're, they start getting um, some leaves, you want to keep that uh, that cover on there, and uh, um, and you want to give them as much light as possible um, when they're when they're germinating. Put them on a, a really sunny windowsill. I have um, a south-facing window, but it really doesn't get that much light, so I use I use grow lights, and um, we actually have a uh, a sheet up here from. Uh, last week, and it's how to build your own grow light uh, setup. So, um, but pretty much you could use just uh, some compact fluorescent lights, or um, some of these type of lights, the uh, the regular fluorescent lights, and you want to get that light as close as possible to those seeds, um, one to two inches off the top of the of the seeds, and uh, once they start growing, you just kind of you want to try to move it up a little bit. So. <coughs> Um, lights, lights going to be really important. That's one of the biggest things. But um, keeping the seeds warm when they're when they're germinating. Some seeds require 60 degree temperatures to germinate. Um, some seeds are even more. Uh, you can sometimes they'll actually tell you right on the package. You know, it requires 75 degree temperatures to germinate. Um, so one of the ways to do that is if you've got an older house with with um, the steam radiators, and it happens to be in front of a south-facing window, or even you've got your grow light set up on it. Put your put your tray right on that. I recommend a block of wood because those trays are usually flimsy, and you'll get water all over your, your radiator. But um, another way is uh, heat mats, and um, I picked one up on on Amazon actually for about 15 bucks, so they're not too bad. Although that particular one's gone, and all the ones I've been seeing are about 20 to 25 dollars. So it's, it's not too bad, and you can use it every year, um, along with your, your grow lights that they you make. Have, they have one that you can put right on your window, so it's, it's, it's a narrow one. I love yep. those. I've got them on my window. So yeah, I've seen them, um, and they're about the same price, too. I think they're a little bit longer, but they're very narrow. And, and they narrow, and they go on the window. And then I have the big, big ones, too. You can get them in any size. Yeah. They, yeah, you can get pretty expensive and, and have these uh, two-by-four-foot um, mats. I like the idea of the smaller ones because I might only be starting two trays or something at once. Um, so, but heat for, for seedlings or for germinating is, is important. Um, I've, I've tried to start stuff in my, my basement before and it's between 50 and 60 degrees and nothing happened. And I got the, the seed starting mat and, um, and things really germinate quickly with, the, with the, that heat on them. You have a question? If you have grow lights yep. and it turns on, then you're good? Or is there every blank up time you should replace them? What do you mean the? The bulbs. The bulbs, um, fluorescent bulbs will deteriorate in their, their, uh, their light output. Um, but if for seed starting, uh, if you've got, say, so, uh, um, this is a typical tray, right? It's about 10 inches by 24 inches or so. Um, and you've got a, f a two by four light or maybe two, two single uh, four foot lights that pretty much cover this perfectly, maybe a little bit longer so you have room on the sides. Um, that's that's going to give you enough light for, not necessarily for growing the plants to their full size, but for for seed starting um, and, and having the light as close as possible. But <clears throat> if you notice that they're kind of like flickering or, or they've got the ends are kind of blackened a little bit, I would I would replace them or you know use those somewhere else where you don't care about the light until they finally burn out and then and is then use brand new ones. One way or the other, because you said you prefaced it by saying that if you wanted to grow it to completion, there might be a difference. Yeah, um, you're going to need a, a lot of light to be able to grow a plant to its uh, full size. Um, the, the sun puts out about a, uh, I believe it's about a kilowatt per square meter. So these lights right here can't put out nearly that amount. Plus, uh, the sun's actually putting out um, more spectrum than, than, uh, than these lights can, can provide. Um, even though plants only use a, a little bit of certain spectrums. 
but um, if you're doing uh, that's that's getting into hydroponics and growing stuff indoors not necessarily hydroponics but um, hydroponics they they would use some really high powered lights to be able to grow stuff indoors I think that would be another another workshop is <coughs> growing stuff hydroponically but um, yeah you would need a, a high output lights basically for that um, these these lights might only be 100 for this whole thing right here with four four bulbs in it might only be 160 watts whereas you can get these lights that are this big that are 100 watts each and you can fill that um, fill up a whole fixture with those so <coughs> um, I actually want to cover a couple of these things over here uh, these these devices I don't know if uh, anybody's been paying much attention to these um, these are actually ways of making containers without actually using any kind of kind of containers and especially not you know to avoid using plastic so you could actually start um, seeds right in a, in a, in a tray uh, without having to use all these these plastic things that are flimsy and they use plastic so um, these things are called soil blockers and I'll start with the with the smallest size what they allow you to do is, is you push this down onto your seed starting mix real hard and compress it into these into this grid right here and then you push on the top and it pushes those soil blocks out and, um, and this, this size is actually kind of nice because you could start an individual seed in each one and as it grows you can instead of cutting the other plants off you just take the ones that you want <coughs> and it actually fits right into the tops of the next size up which you can see that there's these plugs right here that leave an indentation that's the same size as this um, I know Johnny Seeds sells these and uh, I've, I've yet to use them I, I'd really like to use them um, they're about I think they're about 30 bucks depending on the ones that you get but uh, it's a, I think it's a, a really great way of, of starting seeds. You're not using, um, you don't have to use those peat pots or these, uh, I'm sure people have seen these, these are the expandable peat things that you go to the, um, the store, you get the Jiffy, the Jiffy seed starting dome and uh, usually they have these and this is compressed peat. Um, although I have seen that now some places are using compressed coconut core. So they, it's the same idea but in, it instead uses the coconut core which is uh, a renewable material. So just to kind of show this, this mix has kind of a lot of sticks in it so this might not work as well. Now if, if I remember correctly don't you have to mix a, a specific um, texture soil to use the, the seed block as you need a little compost or something because it's got to be yeah. a little bit it's just going to be a different texture or something. It's I've never I've never used this before, but I can already tell you that I'm having trouble because there's too much fibrous material in there, and it's just they're all connecting together. Um, not only that, but if it if you didn't have enough material in there to, to actually give it so that it'll it'll stick together a little bit, um, you're going to have some trouble. Yeah, and this might not be the <laughs> the right texture for this stuff, but. Um, yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, There's a lot of information on the internet about them. Yes, and I'm I'm sure Johnny's uh, would have have some stuff. Organic farming. If you have a flavor mix, depending on what you have, you have to have a little compost, a little water. It can't be too wet. So the first few that you try, you know, might not work. But it's like making bread. You know, you, you figure it out, and they come out they come out really really nice. But you're right. You have to, you have to play with it. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is this probably be when I maybe move out of my basement. And I get a, uh, get a bigger garden. And I'm starting more seeds inside. That that would be my next investment, right there. Um, and then you don't have to buy pots anymore. You just mix up your own seed starting mix. I've been known to stop the trash cans if I see one sticking out, grab it. 
So <laughs> also, there's a product that uh, we use that uh, uh, Roots Bar. It's called Vermont V Compost, and it was made for soil blocks. And they use like a mixture of uh, different kind of peats, but what they do is they screen it so you don't have any of those twigs and rocks and stuff getting in the way. Yeah, it has to be really fine. So really fine, but yeah. fibrous where it stays the structure of light and volume. I don't know, but everybody can see these. I'm pulling out all the sticks. Yeah. Yes? You definitely need some humidity. Uh, so, if you've got, I hate to say, use some plastic wrap, um, but I've, I've, I had some um, some Thai food the other day, and I had an aluminum container with a clear plastic lid, and I saved those. And I'm actually doing, um, I'm, I'm doing wheat grow, grass in that, but that's what I'm, I've been using to start that. I mean, it's perfect size for for what I'm trying to do but it also be a, a good way of, of starting seeds and you don't have to necessarily do um, individual containers I mean this is actually pretty much what I what I'm using for starting the seeds and um, you don't have to have individual containers you could start everything in a flat and then pick out the individual seed or individual um, transplants that you want and a word about that is when you're handling the transplants <clears throat> or the seedlings, you want to pick them up by the leaves because they can grow new leaves. If you pick them up by the stem and you squish the stem, that plant's pretty much done. They, they only make one stem, at least until they get bigger, and tomato plants will make a billion stems, but um, you, you pick them up nice and, and gently just by the, just by the leaves and, and poke a hole into whatever your pot or whatever you're going to transplant them in to kind of grow them to the next level before you transplant them outside. Um, you just poke a hole with a pencil or something like that deep enough so that, that you can just kind of drop the roots right down inside and then just gently pack the soil around the, um, around the transplant. So you don't have to have any kind of container at all. Um, the other thing I, at work we had uh, somebody brought in some cake and they came on these trays and they had these big plastic domes and I mean this big there was two of them and the the trays were nice and sturdy they were really really thick plastic so I, I thought well this will be great for starting a bunch of a bunch of seeds on it even if it's just to hold other containers but I got the humidity domes there so I mean I, I you could really use anything but I encourage you to you know kind of use some found materials Um, if you, if you, when they're real small, if you just take the, the top off, you know, once a day, kind of check on it and, and um, you know, give it any water it might need and then put the lid back on, that's going to be about as much air as it, as it needs. Um, you could poke some holes, you could get fancy. Um, I know w when they get bigger, that's when you, you really need to control more, but when they're, they haven't even popped out of the, out of the uh, starting mix. Um, they, when they haven't even germinated yet, they, the humidity is pretty much as much humidity as you want, as long as you're not growing mold and stuff. Um, one of the things that I do, and, and upcycle, 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 right? the things you get your salad in, you know, if you buy arugula, all those different things are wonderful. But um, what I do is, as soon as they show the first seedling comes up, I put a uh, skewer, bamboo skewer, and, and so that. It, up, like you know, so that there's circulation of air, and you can't if you lose plants. If you need, if you need that cover on plants, you'll get a uh, mildews and, and funguses and all kinds of stuff. You have to have circulation. But while, like you said, while they're germinating, while the seeds are still in there, don't worry about it. As soon as they start showing, give them some air. Um, another thing, actually. Uh, some problems when you're when you're starting seeds. Um, a couple of things I've run into is you get you might get some mold. Um, the mold might not actually kill the plant, but uh, one of the things that I've I've done to um, to take care of the mold is brew some chamomile tea, nice strong chamomile tea, and uh, I mean just leave the you pour some hot water in there and you and you leave it to soak forever, and then put it in a spray bottle and and you can use it and it kills mold. 
um, I have a I have a lemon tree that I have inside right now, and occasionally I'll fertilize it, and then mold will grow on the fertilizer because I don't dig it right down into the into the soil. I just kind of lay it on top and kind of mix it around. And mold will start growing in that nice fertile environment. So I'll go back in there once it starts to. Um, it starts to fuzz up a little bit. I'll go in there and I'll spray it down with some some chamomile tea. Another thing is um, cinnamon. is a uh, helps if you if you kind of sprinkle the tops with with cinnamon, and that'd be more of a preventative before. But I, I like the the chamomile tea that works for me personally. And don't get the cinnamon on the plants because it will burn the plants. I know that from experience. <laughs> so what are you putting the cinnamon on? On the top of the soil. Oh, on the so you, soil? Yeah, just a real light dusting, and that'll prevent the um, prevent it's mold and stuff from going. What'd you say? It's the best fungicide in the world. Unbelievable. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
fish emulsion can stink, so if you get a big tray of this stuff, uh, you might want to go a little bit more dilute than than what it says and kind of work your way up as you're starting to bring them outside. Um, another thing that uh, I'm really bad at is marking what my plants are. I figure I'll just <coughs> marking what my plants are. Um, I figure I'll just figure it out when I start seeing the first set of true leaves, but that could be could be a couple weeks before that happens. So it's a good idea to to mark what they are. Um, popsicle sticks and the in the like are kind of the standard standard thing. Um, but what I've uh, one of the things that I wanted to try this year actually is using a um, aluminum, aluminum can, and you can actually write on it and kind of emboss into it. And it takes you'd have to put put it on something soft, like maybe a piece of soft wood, and then so you can really dig into it, but you would actually have a permanent label that way. And uh, so I'm gonna, I wanna actually start experimenting with that to this year, but that's a little bit of. So you take like a, like what would be a soda can yeah. for most of us. And you cut strips of it. Okay, so you use some kind of scope to use to cut it with. Um, for a soda can, you could really use some scissors. So one, not ones that you wanna use for, uh, not your good scissors, but um, kind of use some utility scissors. And for me, I, I'd wait until um, at work we have a couple of recycling bins, but I, I see people, they, they only collect the ones that are worth five cents. So somebody threw out an Arizona can, so I'd, I'd take that and... Uh, Wouldn't it be sharp though? <laughs> it depending on how you cut it, because you could get a, a sharp burr. Otherwise, it's not too bad, but it's so thin. You, if you really wanted to, you could you kind of roll the edge over, um, or you you put it on something something else. So if you have, um, I'm trying to think of, of what. See, so yeah, I'm kind of yeah. You could put it on a popsicle to stick to hold it up. Yeah, you can do that. But I tongue depressors. <clears throat> what I've yeah. what I've found though is that uh, if you use like a marker or e even sometimes ink um, and definitely pencil, uh, it all wears off or it bleeds as it gets wet. And so then just this big. What about a sharpie? Yeah, it'll bleed right into the because it's a it's a it's a fiber. Um, so it actually soaks into the fiber of the wood and just now it just looks like a a gray tongue depressor. I have these out of trash cans too. The mini glides, the plastic mini glides that people throw, you know, they're a little, and they only cost $10 new, but people throw them away. I get those and I take them apart, I yep. wash them, and I cut them in the lengths I like. I, I like to put a little point on the one that's going to, but if you use an indelible marker, it does not fade, it, do, it doesn't even fade, and it doesn't smear if you let it just dry for a few seconds. And I save them and reuse because I tend to grow the same kind of veggies over and over. And you can just reuse them. And then the, everybody's always throwing those away. So I bet everybody yeah. I know like saves them. Longer. And you could go to Salvation on these too. Yeah. Stuff. But also the siding for houses, the people put the plastic siding if you know anybody's a contractor or if you have any Get source for that. And yes. these, these cut up nice into, uh, into markers too. And I would make sure I'm really sure that they're lead. They're plastic, no. No, I don't even know. Because I'm even going to have lead for you, especially if you're dealing with siding. Because the plastic, the plastic, the, no, the, even the, the aluminum one um, wouldn't have the, uh, uh, wouldn't have lead in it, but the, a lot of plastic that we've been getting from China has um, has a lot of sometimes has a lot of um, lead and other stuff that you know we send to them to get rid of and then they put it in stuff and sell it back to us. So um, there is that risk. Um, it, it's kind of with with everything. Uh, you know, if it's if it's a recycled product, especially, it, I don't think PVC is really recyclable though. I think that's one of the things. There's only really four types of plastics that even get recycled, and they only get recycled at probably, um, I think the statistic that I saw was no more than a 20% uh, recycle rate. So 80% of your plastic that you use actually goes into a landfill, goes to a, um, and even the stuff that does get recycled goes to, uh, goes overseas and gets sorted out by um, women and kids and, and stuff and really bad, 
um, conditions and because we don't want to deal with it because it's, it's a pollutant so we send it over somewhere else and pollute them and um, so so I, rec I do recommend using uh, you know metal um, metal we do recycle here aluminum is a big thing you know it's, it's a lot less energy going into recycling metal and metal can be recycled indefinitely plastic after a while starts to break down but I don't want to give you too much of a lesson in recycling but um, <laughs> so pretty much um, I think I've covered pretty much what uh, most of what I wanted to cover. Uh, hardening off, getting them acclimatized, um, and then after the frost-free date for, for um, non-hardy type plants, uh, plant them after the after the frost-free date. Um, for there are some things that.